Jessica makes her presence felt in dirty Chicago politics. The mayor and Carrie get it on. And family drama is a common theme. Hey, we got some stuff heating up in this episode, so come on, let's talk about it. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing out there? Hope you guys are uh, having a fantastic evening. I know I am. Uh, my name's Tanir Williams. Thank you guys for joining me today. We are talking season one, episode one of Pearson, uh, episode titled The Alderman. Uh, man, I mean, if you guys love some good political drama, good lawyer type drama, which I do, uh, this is going to be the show for us, I think. Um, for those of you out there, um, man, I, I got a whole lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, for you fans out there, I know we got some, uh, I know I want you guys to get into the live chat. Let me know your feelings as we go along because it was juicy tonight. I'm talking juicy. So uh, we got a good one going here. We got a good one. Just to let you guys know, um, again, my name's Tanir Williams. Uh, I have some, a couple special segments tonight later on, uh, which uh, actually I like the name of my special segment. It's called You're in Contempt, okay, going along with the lawyer theme. For those of you who don't know, when you're in contempt, you're not in good graces of the court. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to get into my who's in contempt with me from this first episode. Um, and there's, we're also going to have a little news news segment a little later. As you can see right now, I'm the uh, I'm, I'm riding solo tonight, people. I am riding solo. I'm looking at myself on the camera and uh, just a lone, lone soul right now. But it's okay because I'm going to hold it down. We're going to have a good chat, okay? But I will be having... Um, <laughs> There we go. Rah, 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 rah. You get the horns like it's going down. So it's going to it's going to be fun. But I will be joined next week uh, by my co-host uh, Jackie. So looking forward to that. But yeah, tonight I'm a, I'm a lone ranger. So but that's not going to stop me. So what I want you guys to do is fire up getting this chat as I move along because uh, we got some good good stuff to talk about. Uh, my overall thoughts of this first episode, like I said, really amazing. I like the start that these writers and uh, have gotten us off to. For those of you who don't know, uh, the ca character of Jessica Pearson is an offshoot of um, Suits. So if you guys have ever, any fans out there of Suits that was on USA, you know her, her character, Jessica Pearson. She ended up leaving the law firm there. And we start up the show here, uh, obviously with her leaving New York coming to Chicago, and she's obviously accepted a job in the Chicago mayor's office, Mayor um, Bobby Novak. And so, but she's still the Jessica, the same Jessica Pearson. Um, for those who are new to the show or just coming into it, you can obviously see from this episode that she's a bad woman. You know, she don't take no stuff from nobody. She comes in, will stare you dead in the eye, tell it like it is. I, I enjoy that about Jessica. I feel like sometimes that will get her in trouble. But, um, you know, uh, she's, like I said, very, um, you know, smart, very direct and gets the job done. And sometimes her tactics might be a little questionable, but I think the people of Chicago are going to see like that uh, coming from that big New York corporate law world. Uh, she's about getting things done. And whether it's legal, sometimes you got to go the other route. She gets it done. So, uh, like I said, I, I love the episode. I, I love this first episode set, setting up some interesting relationships um, whether it's with, you know, Jessica and her, um, her boyfriend, whether it's Jessica and her family with the mayor, kind of the relationships in the, the, in the office, what she's walking into, there's a lot of good stuff that I can already see that's going to be going on for this episode. So let's kind of jump right into things. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is, you know, Jessica really just making her presence felt. Uh, like I said, she just comes in just right off the bat, um, you know, storming into the mayor's office. Well, actually, let me back up a little bit. Let me back up. When we first see that opening scene, at least for me, like I said, as a fan of Suits, when we see her shredding the pictures, I was like, oh, man, Jessica's already into some stuff. You know, you could tell she was she was nervous while she was doing it when the co the little guard came in, said, are you OK, Miss Miss Pearson? She was like, I'm good. You know, you could tell she was like holding it together, but she was nervous, you know, and you're like, oh, man, she must be shredding some stuff that. Yeah, she shouldn't be shredding, you know, which is right along the, the, the suits line, <laughs> uh, storyline. Um, but like I said, uh, so we catch her right there. She kind of walks out. 
Um, you know, and then even when she's giving the, the guard, they're like, hey, are you going home tonight? And then she's like, oh, I'm good. I'm going to walk. And she just what walks right around the corner, goes to the cab and says, hey, I need to go here. So already you could kind of tell like, hey, she's into some, you know, she's, she's doing what she has to do uh, to get things done. So um, but like I said, as soon as she walks into the office, we kind of get the um, her first dealings with the mayor and his office. So you can see already that egos are abound in this. I mean, you see, you get to those kind of high level political offices, those high level, like I said, corporate attorney, um, you know, type relationships. Um, people got some egos going on. Nobody wants to be told what to do. So automatically, the mayor and Jessica start butting heads in terms of what her position is. She's still walking in like I run things. Mayor's kind of trying to set her straight, but you can tell she's not used to being told what to do. You know, she's kind of coming in. He's like, well, that's your assignment, you know, and she kind of gives him the look like, okay, uh, I don't know who you think you talking to, but I'm Jessica Pearson, make it ficky. And I don't need you telling me nothing, you know? <laughs> so, um, I believe in the beginning, that's the way, you know, obviously it started like that as the episode moves along. I think, Everyone kind of starts figuring out their way, but there's still like a lot of a lot of conflict going on. So that which makes for good drama for us. Yay. Um, one of the things that I wanted to to, uh, to point out was that really actually stuck out to me. In the first couple minutes is when she's having the um, the conversation actually with her with her boyfriend and they're waking up, and he's. You can tell they've obviously moved, uh, moved to Chicago. They're kind of getting getting in with their surroundings, and even in the relationship. I mean, is it just me, or does it seem like she may even? I don't know. if She wears the pants, but she has a very strong voice in her personal relationship. <laughs> and one of the, I wrote down one of the quotes she had. She was like, you know, when they were talking, and he was like, "I'm not trying to get in a fight," and she was like, "It sounds like you're trying to get in a fight for someone who's not." And she just had this quote that really stuck with me. And he was like, she was like, um, you know, basically, you need to suck it up and, quote, I won't have this conversation every morning, end quote. I was like, ooh, we, Jessica. And he was kind of, Jeff, her boyfriend, was kind of just left like, all right, woman, like, I'm not trying to deal with this today. You know, it's like, you could just kind of tell, like, he'd been through it. Like, man, like, first of all, she's a lawyer, so she's probably really good at arguing. She just has that attitude, like, I'm not trying to deal with this nonsense, so just go sit down somewhere. I mean, and Jeff, in his own right, he's a lawyer. He seems like he's doing some big things. <laughs> but like I said, Jessica is just the the captain of her world, you know, and she will not accept no as an answer or be told what to do. Uh, which, like I said, lends itself to very interesting, I think, storylines going forward on how she's going to operate in the mayor's office. Um, so we kind of get uh, shifted into or, you know, fast forward into, like I said, her working her first day. Um, and side note, one. Well, actually, I'll get into this as we like I said, as she moves in with the, um, you know, the mayor's kind of telling her what he needs her to do. Um she has a little run in with her cousin at the at the emergency room with the girl, which, by the way, side note, uh, I believe that's going to be an interesting uh, plot line going forward, because obviously there's something there with her and her cousin and her family like her cousin really does not like, you know, I, I don't know if it's, she likes her, if she's jealous of her, or what's going on um, as she, you know, as Jessica steps in, seems like she's trying to, you know, make peace with her, and the, the cousin's just really giving her a hard time, so I, I, I'm really interested to see more of that relationship, or I think some things are going to come out in terms of why she feels the way she does uh, about Jessica, because right now, she's just giving her a hard, hard time, and you're like, come on, man, dang, Angela, like give the girl a break. You know what I'm saying? So um, that'll be an interesting, interesting storyline. But again, as she moves into the office, as Jessica, you know, uh, starts her, her duties. Um, it's interesting because actually the cousin kind of gave, I feel like uh, Jessica a little shot of reality because she, when she was saying that uh, she, Jessica had moved in and Jessica was telling her that, uh, oh, the schools, if you, you know, they need to do this or you're, they're not going to really get a seat at the table unless they do X, Y, and Z. Uh, the fact that she didn't know about the hunger strike 
and her cousin was like, you don't even know what's going down the street, going on down the street from you. You come in acting all big and bad. And I think that kind of gave her a dose of humble pie. She was like, mm, OK, you did get me on that one. So I feel like she had a little bit of a like the turn of heart, you know, like the hardcore New York corporate attorney kind of got dropped and you kind of see her being like, hey, maybe I need to be a uh, a beacon for the people, you know, the west side, south side of Chicago. Uh, side note, I'm also my family is actually from Chicago. Uh, both my parents are from there. My dad actually grew up on the west side of Chicago. My mom is from the south side of Chicago. So um, and I actually went to school in the Chicago area. So went to college there. So a lot of the the filming uh, some of the places I'm very familiar with. So that even strikes a little little more of a chord with me. Um, so just a little bit about me. People like, we don't want to hear about you. We want to hear more about Jessica Pearson. So, okay, let's go back to Jessica Pearson. Um, I like that uh, for, I don't know if you have, there's any uh, baller fans out there, but if you'll notice the uh, press secretary for the, for the mayor, um, his name, Derek Mays, actually played Quincy on Ballers. And we actually had Quincy in, uh, I was on the Ballers After Show, and we had him in studio. So maybe we can hopefully get him in again for all the fans out there as this season goes on. And now that I think about it, he did mention at the time when I was talking to him about Ballers, he's like, I'm going to be on this new show um, with, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking out on... uh, her name, Gina Torres. He's like, I'm going to be on a, a a new show with her. And we're like, oh, great. So this is it. Now it's coming around. And I'm, I'm realizing it. When I saw him again, I was like, oh, this is what he was talking about. So hopefully maybe we could get, his real name is Eli, Go, I believe, Gory, Gore is how you say his name. Um, maybe hopefully we can get him in studio to discuss uh, how things are going or depending on whatever episode we, we see him in. But he looks like, I feel like he's going to be a key player in this um, that Jessica is going to use to whether it's do her dirty work, um, like we may have seen in this episode when he had to get tax returns, and he, but he seems like he's for the people, so he's like, man, like kind of Jessica's kind of a godsend for him, so I want to keep an eye on that, but he seems like he could be a fun character. Um, you know, he came in, one funny line that I liked, I don't know about you guys, but um, when he said, uh, when he just, when he first met Jessica, and he was like, okay, Mrs. Pearson, and she was quick to remind him she was like Ms. Pearson and he was like okay like I see who I'm dealing with here so (laughs) let's get into it all right um another person that is definitely gonna have some beef already has beef and is gonna be an ongoing beef well I shouldn't say that I feel that uh Carrie the city attorney they are obviously having beef right now. Jessica's the new kid on the block. Carrie feels that Jessica's moving in on her territory. She used a couple of her lawyers to do some of the stuff um, for the lawsuit against uh, Midwest uh, Portage. So I feel like she thinks Jessica's stepping on her toes. I kind of feel, and maybe this is, I don't know if this is jumping a little into, you know, predictions, but I think that uh, that's going to be an interesting relationship. I feel that they're going to have some issues um, early on, but, uh, I feel like somewhere down the line that maybe they're going to come back. So we're going to refer back to this episode, the first episode, when that happens, you'll be like, see, Tanir, he called it. I'll be like, I know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know? Um, so I, uh, as we dig into this episode and we get more into, um, kind of the just city, corrupt city politics going on. And this is something that I've actually, let be, like I said, because my family's actually like entrenched in Chicago, I feel like there's always been like a history of kind of the stuff that's going on, like with uh, McGann, people paying off cops. Like, I feel like Chicago of all the cities is just one of those ones where you feel like they really had a lot of corruption, whether it was in their city government or have, a, I should say, have a history of it um, in the city government or with the police or things like that. So it'll be, it was um, it was interesting to see how I mean we don't know what McGann has done but apparently you know he's in with the mayor the mayor has some stuff on him McGann has some stuff on the mayor and you notice that at the end of that episode Jessica actually asked like I need to know what McGann has on you and he just kind of said uh, yeah go with the blue one or you know whatever she was doing at the time 
which means he doesn't fully, he's like, we're not, Jessica, I appreciate what you did, but we are not on that level yet where I can be levying, giving you secrets about what's going on. So um, I'm just, I love just seeing how these, in these shows and just even in, in real life, when you hear about these kind of politics going on, backhanded stuff, uh, backhanded, um, back channel stuff going on, payoffs, uh, McCann's a dirty dude. You can see him trying to drive a rift between the the mayor and his brother. And I'm not all the way sure when the the mayor said he loved his half brother. I'm not really sure that I believe him on that. Like, how do I know he's not trying to use his brother? Like I said, for the the detail or in some other way, because it looks like his his brother's got his hands dirty. So everybody's dirty on this stuff. So it's like, man, like nobody is really safe from anything. So. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be it's definitely gonna be good. Um, one thing I, I definitely liked, uh, I'm kind of reading back, uh, looking at some of the notes that I took, um, was when the mayor actually said when mayor was talking to Jessica, and he said, um, you know, issues are less important than relationships, and I don't know that quote just stuck with me. I want to know what you guys think about that in terms of we can already see how things get done. You know, when he was dealing with the CEO of the bus company, um, you know, how Jessica kind of calls him out, how things have always been done. Like, hey, you guys always, you know, have endless lunches that the taxpayers dime. Nothing ever really gets done. So she's there to really, really clean house. So I, you know, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, she's she's in there. She's in there to let people know, like, I'm not here to play. You know, I am Jessica Pearson, you know, always looking G with my suits on, you know, bringing a little bit of that New York flair uh, to Chicago. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So I'm like, let's do it, Jessica. Let's let's do it. Um, I want to talk about the uh, Carrie some more, the uh, the city attorney. Now, Carrie definitely feels threatened by Jessica even though the mayor has assured her that uh, Jessica is not there to replace her. (sighs) Oh, Carrie. Carrie seems like she's gotten herself into some stuff with the mayor. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, I I, I thought in that, that ending scene, I was like, it was the double whammy. First of all, not only do they obviously have a relationship, they've had a relationship, the mayor and Carrie, but it's it's an ongoing thing. Jessica apparently has called her out on it, um, which she wasn't totally wrong on. So that ending scene when the mayor goes to Carrie's house and she's drinking the wine, feeling herself a little bit, kind of talking like, you don't need to be here. And the mayor's like, what about me? What if I'm the one who needs it? And you were like, oh, okay. So they obviously get into it, start uh, doing a little little kissy kiss and then Carrie drops the bomb and says like something about like what about your wife and I was like wait a minute what mayor mayor come on man you married and you going hard at Carrie and obviously probably having like the office fling because obviously it's been going on for a little bit oh man I feel woo I feel that that yeah, that, that that's that's gonna be tough. I mean, everybody loves a little office fling, though, you know. But I was like, that's bold to to go to her house, you know. And then you got your half brother on it too, so that's why you know when everybody's in on it, like you can't say nothing because his half brother was in on look like the murder that Jessica received the pictures on. So he's like, you know, you can't say nothing to nobody because you gonna go down for everything. So that's why I'm like, man, just everybody is is in on the take. So, but I was kind of looking like, yeah, mayor, come on, man, you can't be stepping out on the on the wife like that. But I guess you know, people in those those kind of positions, man, they get that power. Like you can't tell me nothing, you know. So that's gonna be something. And I, I feel like at some point, you know, Jessica's gonna find out something somewhere. Probably you can't be going around doing that. Plus, she, she's got. You know, super sleuth got Derek Mays on the case, and who knows? He may have to. He may have to quit, not question, but he may have to uh, pick an allegiance, man. You know, because he's maybe if he's like, hey, we gonna do the, get the get the right thing done, and if Jessica's gonna do that, maybe he might have to go to that side. I don't know, but uh, yeah, throwing the the wife in there, whew, that's gonna be some stuff. Because you know, there's gonna be at some point a run in, 
with the wife and Carrie or something. That's that's always cold blooded. So um, yeah, that should be that should definitely be fun. Um, let's see. One of my favorite parts of the uh, of the episode was actually the the little dinner that they had. Uh, with with the little where they had the champagne and Carrie was talking to the CEO about the electric buses and how Jessica just kind of stepped in and started you know threatening with the lawsuit and she you could tell on her face she was looking like what are you doing and the guy's like who are you like everybody's always asking like who are you and Jessica's always dropping these bombs like boom like I work for the mayor I'm here to clean house I know about you all this stuff and they're kind of looking like okay I'm like, you here to do some stuff. And everybody keeps telling Jessica, like, you don't know how things are done. And maybe they need to realize, like, you don't know how I do things. Like, they, she's not scared. Like, she's been up against some some stuff. Like I said, for those of you, the Suits fans, I mean, she's been up against some titans of Wall Street CEO companies, like some very bad people. So coming into Chicago and dealing with some Chicago politics just is not going to scare her. You know, even when uh, Carrie threatens her. Uh, in the bathroom saying like I know you know I did not get to this position by being stupid you know and I think that kind of took Jessica back a little bit because I feel that maybe she did under S. Carrie like a little bit or she kind of looks down upon her I feel but maybe when she dropped that it was kind of like a warning like watch your back Jessica you know because I can I can come with some heat too so um that, yeah, that's that's going to be a good one to 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 watch as as these two go along. But I kind of feel when they were going through that, the stuff with the electric buses, at one point you kind of felt like, oh, well, maybe they're kind of they, they they put those differences to the side, and you go for um, you know like they realize, hey, we're we're going for the same thing here. We're on the same team. So I thought they were going to put that you know kind of come to a head actually when they caught the CEO at that little dinner and said they were going to do the lawsuit. But then Jessica kind of pulled a little move at the courtroom and told them they had settled and didn't tell, didn't tell Carrie that they had settled. So I think there's always going to be some beef there. And obviously the the point about the her taking the uh, Jessica's license and then Jessica finding out about her dad, you know, I don't think the remorse is the word for it. But maybe Jessica was like, all right, my bad, but still like you on my bad, my bad list. So, um, yeah. Uh, another, like I said, another interesting, another interesting side. We see the hardcore side of Jessica when she has to deal with the, in the business world. But I really liked how they showed her like a much more vulnerable side as well of Jessica. Uh, when it came to her family, when it came to dealing with her cousin, um, even dealing with her boy, uh, you know, boyfriend or whatever, where you can kind of see, like, she's just not like this just raging corporate machine, like, I'm trying to take down everybody. You know, she still does have feelings, even though she's still strong in those feelings. But the fact when she goes, like, to her cousin's house and tells um, tells him that she had to drop the case, and she was like, I know, and she just felt really bad, like, you know what, I, you know, I don't want to come in, but I'm sorry I had to do it. She felt that she had failed. You know, which is you can tell that, she, you know, like I said, Jessica does not accept failure. Um, at all that's probably just not in her makeup um, but she had that human moment you know and it was good it was good to see um it was good to see that that like i said she's just not like this just on the prowl just destroying everything in her path and i think there always will be that balance like how is she going to it she's kind of like the and by no means do i i know this but i'm kind of by i should say by no means do i know this from personal experience but it seems like she's the the woman in this new millennium, you know, she's uh, smart, powerful, knows what she wants, goes after it, gets it done. But then there's stuff on the home front, you know, that that attitude that gets her there sometimes can be um, maybe a little put offish, you know, to certain people. Like I said, maybe the got the, the men in her life or not men, the man, you know, Jeff, um, he seems very supportive, but maybe sometimes she can be, oh, you know, that can be a little much for him where he's just like, I don't want to deal with that. So dealing with being successful in her career, but also keeping a relationship going, which I'm glad at the end, he kind of sent some little flowers, you know, like, Hey, you know, we had our little tiff, but you steal my babe, you know, type of thing, sent her the little yellow flowers. So I was like, good Jeff. Cause he knows if he hadn't, he wouldn't have had nowhere to come home to. So that was a good move. Jeff looking out for you. Number one, my dude. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, Jeff, uh, like I said, her relationships, her personal relationships, and then I think even her dealing with the the community is going to be an interesting, um, like, is she got, you know, how she's going to dive into that. Uh, because, like I said, that's a step down, from, not a step down, it's a step in a different direction from where she's coming from. So maybe getting more involved in those type of movements and things that uh, that she was doing. Um, you know, like I said, she could be that beacon for the community. We shall see. Because she definitely knows how to maneuver around the corporate world. So it's maybe just coming down off the, you know, she's maybe in a little kind of a, a little tower there, you know, when you're when you're dealing with you know, big corporate clients, that big time money, you know, maybe you, you kind of fall out of touch with the the common folks. So, you know, this might be a good, good way. Maybe we see her progress in terms of, in terms of that. So, um, let's see. Um, I'm kind of just going through my notes here. Um, I think I kind of hit on everything that I wanted to, uh, to talk about. Um, in terms of this episode, like I said, I mean, there was a lot going on, you guys, and I'm looking um, in the chat right now, and it looks like I am the only one there, so um, I appreciate that. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm kidding. If you guys, uh, I definitely want, am I the only one? Let me see. Okay, I don't, like, this is why you need, like, the co-host or someone to help you out, because, um... You definitely don't want to be trying to run the chat by yourself, trying to talk to folks and things like that. So it says I'm the only one in there. I don't know if it could be a bad loop or whatever, but uh, I definitely want to always know like how you guys feel in terms of you know what kind of stuck out to you for this episode uh, and where you think where you think things are going. What do you think is going to be a hot topic moving forward? Uh, and, or like I said, with the characters, where things are are, are going to push forward to. So I'm going to take this time right now to, uh, let's see, I actually want to do, we got to pay some bills around here. Actually, there's no bills, but I got to actually just do a, you know, take the time to do the read. You guys know how it goes, how we do things around After Buzz here. Um, and I'm actually looking for, hold on a quick second. For those, for those of you who are watching me, my YouTube, I just pulled a very real move, and I had to go get my little live read because uh, it was not with me, and I apologize about that. So the screen went a little blank because your boy had to go find the the live read message. So um, here we go. You know what? Hey guys, we appreciate you guys listening to After Buzz. And before I move on to the next topic, I just wanted to say thank you for making us the ESPN of TV talk now and helping us to continue to grow. Now, if you're on YouTube right now, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, I mean YouTube's iTunes, please give us a five-star rating. But no matter what happens, where you are, please leave us a comment so you can get involved in the conversation. Now, being a part of AfterBuzz TV has meant so much to all of us, and we truly appreciate you supporting us in doing what we love. So don't forget to tell your friends and keep enjoying our shows, all right? We appreciate the love. Like I said, we love our AfterBuzzers out there. You guys are the best. Like I said, whether it's chat, chiming in with uh, with news or things that you guys hear about, just loving the shows, we appreciate your guys' feedback. So um, please continue to uh, to support us here at AfterBuzz because we love you guys. Now, I do want to move into my special segment segment of the night like i said i mentioned earlier a special segment called you're in contempt chong chong i feel like i need like a gavel slamming or something but we're working on it it's only our first episode i'm by myself but we're gonna have that worked out but we will have some kind of sound effect or something for you next time to make this like official legal type stuff you know what i'm saying um but basically the premise of you're in contempt is either a person or situation that happened during the episode that you're just kind of like, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's not right. You know, like I said, in a courtroom when the judge bangs the gavel and says you're in contempt, that means you are not in good graces with him. So for me, my you're in contempt moment was definitely McCann when he was talking to the mayor's brother and just kind of trying to pay him off to spy on his brother, dividing, trying to divide them. 
And just coming in just that underhanded way, I was like, come on, dude, like really? And you can already tell he is kind of just a low ball, just a low kind of scum, scum of the earth dude. So that was my contempt. You're in contempt. I was and I think McCann, he, he, he seems like he could just be an all time. You're in contempt, like, you know, going forward. But for tonight, he really did it for me. Um, and then also. I got to say, actually, right up there was the mayor. I got two tonight. The the ending, finding out he's married and sleeping with the thing. You're like, oh, man, you're in contempt, mayor. Blank, blank. You know, you can't be doing that, stepping out on the wife. So, yeah, those are my you're in contempt moments. So, that's it. Like I said, if you guys are in the chat, <laughs> send me your you're in contempt moments. I, I definitely want to hear that. Definitely want to hear contempt because I know after buzzers, you guys be having some feelings on stuff. You know, especially when you feel a show. I've seen, I've done past shows and you guys get in there and you will let people have it. So much so, I know you're the type to be walking up on these actors if you see them on the street. Be like, I can't believe you did that to your wife. And he'd be like, but I'm playing a part. That's not real. Be like, I don't care. I'm going to tell her right now when I see her. You know, even though you haven't seen the wife, you still going to be dropping knowledge on her. Be letting her know, like, watch out for him. He's a bad dude bad dude so um but yeah send in send in your contempt moments for this week's episode definitely would appreciate that um i also have a little new segment that i want to uh go into that's right i'm on a roll i gotta remember my little drop that comes in there i appreciate that thank you producer um producer j-lo back there holding it down for me wow yeah when your boys just you know, try to get things going on this first episode, but uh, I appreciate the help. So as I had mentioned before, um, like I said, uh, next week I'm going to be, uh, Jackie will be here with me and she'll probably be helping me out with some news. But um, I think I mentioned, actually mentioned it a little earlier that uh, Eli Gorey, who plays uh, Derek Mays, he was previously on Ballers. He played the role of Quincy, which was a top high school prospect in uh, on the show ballers um and like i said we had had him in studio earlier he uh or when i was doing the ballers episode or uh the after show last year and he came in great dude super nice talked about acting with the rock and all that kind of stuff so i would love to get him in again uh this year and have him talk about pearson um Everyone else, I mean, Jessica, um, like I said, I mean, her, I know her uh, as, you know, you guys probably do, uh, who had watched Suits, you know, she had uh, previously been married to uh, Lawrence Fishburne, and she's just out here doing things, you know, and got, like I said, got the spinoff show, I was so happy for her, because I really loved her character on Suits, and she's continuing to, to put it down, so big ups to Jessica, keep doing your thing, all the writers, producers, I mean, like I said, we've only got one episode, but, um, you guys are doing a good job in my book so far, so keep it going. Keep it going. Um, so now I want to move into uh, predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Yes, sir. Let's get these predictions going. So my prediction... Going forward, I got a couple. I couldn't just even, you know, just leave it for one. I probably got two or three. Uh, one, as we saw in the episode, the um, episode, I guess, for the scenes for the episodes next week, I think uh, Jessica's about to get into some serious stuff. Those pictures of the dude who was murdered, seeing the uh, half brother in the picture. I mean, it seems like things could escalate very quickly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, because I feel like she's going to have to either confront the mayor and either something that he knows about or maybe he doesn't know about and he might have to confront his half-brother. Looks like I'm going to guess that it was something that he had to do on behalf of McCann and things are going to get real dirty. And that means if um, Jessica's snooping around getting this information just like McCann said he she could really blow up whatever him and the mayor have going on so that might put either the mayor in a tight spot you know because McCann might put pressure on him like you got to get rid of her or like you know kill her whatever you got to do and you know he probably obviously I don't think the mayor is that low and dirty where he wants to probably get rid of someone like Jessica but who knows you know, but I think she's going to start diving into their secrets and what they got going on. And maybe it'll be revealed what McCann has on uh, the mayor. Maybe maybe her half brother was handling some dirty business um, on behalf of the mayor. And, um, you know, I think that that's going to go down. I think um, 
like I said, with Carrie and Jessica, I don't know. I feel like for a little bit, they still may have a little rivalry going, but I think there's going to be some kind of moment where I feel like things will turn. Like they may always have a rivalry, but maybe they'll get on the same side for, for a common cause or something like that. So, um, those are two relationships, two things that I'm really interested to see going forward, how that's all going to pan out. So those are my predictions for this week. Um, again, you guys, uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by, listening to this first episode. Like I said, I feel like the ep- the, the show is going to be excellent. I'm super excited for next week's episodes. I'm super excited for you guys to come back. And like I said, hopefully you get more of you guys in the chat. Or if you guys are already in there and I just can't see that you're in here, please excuse me <laughs> for not seeing you. But I definitely want to acknowledge you guys for you know being there, uh, staying with the show, and like I said, letting your feelings be known. Um, again, my name's uh, Tanir. Uh, my social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Tanir W. That's at T-E-N-E-R-E-W. And um, like I said, next week I will be joined by my co-host Jackie and we going to continue to tear into this and, and give you guys the goods, all right? Hey, you guys have a great evening. Again, I appreciate you stopping by and uh, hey, have a fantastic week, okay? It's your boy Tanir signing off. Have a good one. Hey. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.